Hello people, welcome! Episode 34, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, my Let's Play series. As I told you before, is uh, today we're going to solve some issues with uh, pipes and uh, all the inventory problems I'm having right now. And uh, by the way, so you know, yes, I didn't play much between last episodes and this one. In fact, I play like nothing at all. So we're going to craft some compactor pipes. To be precise, we're going to make five of them and we're going to see them in action. So first, let me get rid of these pistons. I don't really need them. And let's go to our quarry system. You can see I reactivated my cells here, but they are not uh, having much, well, one diamond. I just uh, enabled them like uh, 5 or 10 minutes ago. And you can see here that the quarry didn't, didn't really work all that much by the, well, by thanks to the water expansion, so to speak. We have, however, some really nice lava in there. <laughs> nice to know. And now we go in here. You can see this quarry is faring much quicker. Oh, look, there was a natural source, water source down there than that other one. As I said, if you make quarries small enough, then they are going to be, well, essentially faster when it comes to reach the bottom, which is where the real goodies are. Now, we should be careful because there's a lot of lava around lately and place a water source in there. Now, if I can get out of here without making a mess, that would be perfect. So, how are we going to do this? Oh well. We are going to place, like in, in here, for example, we're going to remove this and place this. And you can see um, we should be seeing something. Do they require some sort of Rest, uh, rest on powering or something? Yeah. Now you can see the cobblestone is not pa passing through. It is instead being compressed into chunks. Perfect. So now we are reducing the amount of uh, items traveling through our system. In this case in here, there's not, there's not much we can do because it's just close to, to the teleportation pipe, but in here we can do a lot. Well, just get the compactor, hit here and here, and place some levers. So this, oops. I almost fell down. Right for me. Not wearing? Yes, yes, I'm wearing. So there we go. Now we are sending much less uh, cobblestone through the system. Well, we are sending it more compressed. And we should have a little better frame resolution thanks to that. <clears throat> well, I don't know if you're noticing it, but I am already doing it. We can't do that, however, in this uh, system in here. It's a shame, really. But uh, there's nothing we can do because we're using... Well, the compactor pipes are from Buildcraft. And here, this uh, this is a pipe system, system from uh, Red Power 2 and they don't work together, after all. We could apply the same in here, but there's no real need since uh, monsters are not that... Uh, oops. 
Okay, was uh, checking I had the difficult on because I wasn't hearing any monster at all. Now I am. Now I am. So as I was telling you, uh, there it's not uh, so much items traveling through those system as it's from the quarries. So there's no real need for this to work like that. We could, in, uh, in fact, place it downstairs and uh, between the teleporting pipe and the system, but what for? Seriously. It's arriving some sugarcane, some cobblestone. Yep. Essentially that. It's a little better right now. So, with this being said, I believe uh, I had promised some different uh, possibilities for this episode to work. Oh, had too much Eternalist fuel and I didn't even realize it. Uh, no, the stick remains with me. Thank you very much. And if you watch my tutorial, you know this is not really all that efficient a system as uh, I thought it was. That in fact the most efficient system would be removing this collector in here, place another relay on the top of the chest and another four condensers on top of it. But uh, I believe we're good for now. Now what I told you I was going to do is uh, either some railcraft to make a, a path to my desert base or some nuclear powering. So why don't we do both? We can start making the rails and then go about making the nuclear parts after all. Anyway, for the nuclear parts we're going to need a fair amount, uh, well, a lot of cool and sell. Now, coolant cell, if you remember, was made uh, by picking some tin. If I can find it without much effort, and turn it into empty cells. Sixty-four should be more than enough, by the way. So there's no need for making more. Oh, and by the way, if you don't really like to use industrial craft, if you have equivalent exchange, uh, once you have the dark matter furnace, it will break the ores into... Well, in it will have a hundred percent. Let me see. Do we have any ores in here? No, we don't. Shame, really. I'll show you later. Uh, anyway, you play, uh, the red matter furnace works as a combination of the um, macerator and the um, electrical furnace at the same time. It takes one ore and pulls out always two, um, two bars of whatever ore you pulled in. Anyway, we need now to fill this with water. We can do it by hand. And you can see they they do stack, or we can we could craft uh, industrial crafts pump here. You can see it requires four empty cells, an electronic circuit, a machine block, two mining pipes, and a tree tap. The mining pipes are crafted like this, and they are used essentially because well uh, there are a mining well in industrial craft miner that works essentially uh, in a way a little more sophisticated than the mining well from from Buildcraft 2. The miner will attack a 5x5 five five area and it will take only a valuable stuff. It won't take cobblestone or dirt or sand or gravel. It will only take ores <coughs> And other goodies like that. I don't know if if it will take uh, a crystals from some craft, for example. But uh, I never felt the need to check it. Frankly, 
I prefer the quarry because that way I know where I've been mining instead of placing the miner on top of a previously exploited spot. Now I believe we have to place in here, in this tractor, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, cool and cells. Which is exactly what we need. So let me place this in here. What, why do we need coolant cells? Well, essentially it's for nuclear energy. And you can see we have the reactor chamber and the nuclear reactor. Let's limit uh, things a little. The nuclear reactor will require a reactor chamber, some advanced circuits, a generator, etc. Essentially anything in industrial craft that creates energy will require a generator. And the reactor chamber, oh dear, it doesn't require... <laughs> oh well, the integrated reactor plating... Ah, the integrated heat dispensers, they do require coolant cells. We are not going to need 64 anyway, so I better get most of these things from here. Yeah. Like this should be more than enough. And let's save this for another time, for example. <clears throat> and of course we can go and make them work automatically. Do not worry about that. We could uh, just make um, an automatic crafting table because, yes, integrated, integrated reactor plating will not stack. However, we can use uh, something from logistic pipes to solve it. And since that will be a nice chance to show you how to do it, why don't do just like just that? Let me grab some extra items and I'll see you upstairs. And I got my hands on iron ores, so let's see. Yay! Four iron ingots from two iron ores. Isn't it great? And it took no time to be cooked. Not to mention the dark matter, the red matter furnace has um, internal storage. So let me see. Yes, the advanced circuits are here already. Let's go upstairs. And um, after I got uh, some crafting tables, and I believe I have here some crafting pipes. Yep, crafting logistic pipes. Perfect. Let's see upstairs. Well, I did not uh, has well, I didn't have to take the, all those all those automatic crafting tables upstairs, but oh well, not a real problem. So, so first we are going to craft chest, and then we are going to take a basic logistic pipe and place a piece of redstone at each side, and that gives us a satellite logistic pipe. Now, what I'm going to do is to graph my regular axe because I am not sure what will happen if I use the elemental cutter in here and remove this. Now I am going to select the chest and place it in the middle. No, we cannot access the contents of the chest, but do not worry. Now we take the satellite logistic pipe and we can place it. We need to place something to the side, like this. And there we go. This is a satellite logistic pipe. You can see it's this, it is a small square in the center, like the, like the crafting logistic pipe. And uh, it only has the corners painted on, on yellow, instead of being a full square. Uh, if we click on it, nothing happens. We're going to need the usual thingy from logistic pipes, which is the wrench. And we see the satellite ID. I'm going to make it satellite ID 1, and we'll see in a moment why uh, what's the uses for that. Now, let's see. Uh, the, the integrated 
reactor plating. It's made with items that do stack, so let's use this place in here. Some copper, an advanced alloy in here, perfect. We import, and there we go. Now uh, we are going to craft the integrated heat dispenser. And this fella has some non-stacking items. To be precise, the coolant cells, well, the integrated reactors are also something that, does, that doesn't stack. So we are going to... What was the recipe? Sorry. Uh, copper on the sides. Okay. So we are going to place here this, this in here, and of course we need an integrated plating, which I completely forgot to craft. Let's craft some, now that we are doing it, and you, you will notice they do not stack. And here goes in the middle. You can see, there we go, and we place it in here. We import, but this is going to try to enter and it will be rejected. So we're going to remove it from here. See how the satellite goes in there. And remember, two of these and one of these. See how I place them on the gray colored, dark gray colored area for the satellite. And now we have essentially uh, solved the problem. Now in here we are going to need some some stuff. So why don't I grab myself my requesting system, remote orderer, and the basic logistic pipe. I'll place the basic logistic pipe like in here, for example. And let's see, craft. Hmm, where are the things I want to craft? Well, I'm going to need two machine blocks. Ah, there we go. Uh, an integrated heat dispenser. And I believe that's all, essentially. Yep, because I already have some integrated reactor plating. So I will go in here. <clears throat> oh well, I made I made need some re integrated reactor plating after all. And was it like this? Yep. Now the integrated heat dispenser and integrated reactor plating do not stack. So I'm going to need one of each. And let's ask for one of these. Now see how all things go around, how they enter inside of that chest, and they go out. And we get this following here. And the integrated reactor plating. Perfect. So here it is. We place the crafting pipe on top. We import and see how we need to place here. Three and one. And we need to change this to satellite 1. There we go. And since I am a little crazy about having things sorted, I move the machine block to here. There shouldn't be any kind of problem with having this machine block in here, but I'm just like that. So now, the nuclear reactor, we could ask for it to be crafted for us, but uh, there's no real need, frankly. Let's ask instead for two reactor chambers. <laughs> there we go. And we see we have enough materials. Great. How things are moving is impressive, frankly. See how things are getting inside the satellite pipe before the items get out of the system. Perfect. Now, what else do we need? A generator. Now, the system can make also generators because I added them for the for the solar panels. 
and here it is. Just perfect. So let's place the generator in the middle, a reactor chamber to the sides, advanced circuit here and here. It's rendered with an advanced alloy. Nuclear reactor, yay! Now, of course, I am not going to add the nuclear reactor to the recipe. It would be essentially too meaningless because uh, you will only need one reactor. Oh, hi, fella. You will only need one reactor, well, two at the most, but you are not going to need several of them. However, you will need several reactor chambers. So let me sort my inventory for a while and I'll be back with you in a moment. And by the way, remember to keep this open, or at least under constant surveillance, unless you want the deposits to explode. Oh, brain is zombie. <laughs> and got a soul fragment too. Yay! This is great because I was uh, running a little low on, on soul sand. Well, soul fragments, I mean. Uh, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, for example. And remember, <coughs> all my non-stackable items and my coal dust is going to. Well, in fact, I can take all the coal dust and place it in here without much of trouble. It's not like I have all that stuff. <coughs> and I should, now that I think about it, uh, make a way to turn the sand into glass. So let me grab another crafting logistic pipe and a piece of glass. And I'll show you. But first I'm going to place this downstairs. I believe it was in here. Yes, I know I am crafting like a lot. And gotta need Yes, all 61 are going to be placed in here. I'm going to craft 64 anyway. And yes, I know I only have one of these running. Uh, frankly, all four were overkill. It was good when I had a lot of time to dispose of, but right now this is more than enough. So let's go downstairs and I'll show you a little neat trick here. So, well, it's not lit, uh, it's not that a trick, it's just you know, how to do this kind of stuff. We're going to need this, and we're going to need... Where's my smooth stone? I don't have... A, ah, yes, it is here. So we connect it in here, and since it's not in any kind of intersection, it's no trouble at all. And we walk this. So input is sand, output is glass. See? Now we can have all the glass we want. It has its own place to be stored into, and all will be good. Um, shouldn't you be going here, theory? Might be some sort of book or something. When I am not close by or something, it just uh, locks. Or not, maybe... If you're full, why aren't you letting things pass? Oh, of course, it thinks it is not full, then it results it is. So, small trouble. Hmm. Oh well, I suppose I should have gone in the end with a round robin, or... Well, we can solve this looking another kind of pipe. Yay! Here it is, distribution transport pipe. Piece of redstone, iron, and iron. In the meantime, anyway, I should do something with all this stuff because, frankly, it's beginning to be a little annoying. That should be more than enough. Now, if you're wondering what the problem is, essentially it's uh, that, well, 
uh, the, there's too much um, items being pumped at the same time. So, for example, two pieces of smooth stone get inside when there's only space for one. So let's get this out of here. And where's the other? In here, perfect. Uh, let's send them to up here and let's go craft. Okay, distribution transport pipe. Yay! Now this fella, it's uh, essentially something with colors. Yay! It has colors. It's like the diamond pipe in that regard. Now we hit it. We don't really need to use the wrench. In fact, it doesn't work with it. And you can see here there are numbers. Now each side has a color and you can see the colors in here and they have numbers. There essentially you can there, uh, here you can set send uh, x a uh, number x of uh, items through the red through the blue etc. So for example like this for it and here and here we would be sending three items through the dark blue and two items through the yellow pipe for every five items that cross that pipe. So essentially it's like a round robin but you can decide how much items go which way. Which is kinda perfect for here because I can say hey We'll have some trouble in here. Maybe. Maybe not. There's another option. There, are, there is this bones transport pipe. Stone transport on a piece of cobblestone. Do I have a piece of cobblestone? Nope. Can't get it. So, no, no problem at all. There we go. The bounce pipe will simply make items that go through here to go back. The item will go in here and then go back. Okay. Um, or maybe I won't be able to use it, I don't know. So in here, we place all the items to zero, but for the rest, in with, uh, we, or where we, can, we want one, and dark blue we want uh, two, yes, and the others to zero too. So essentially here for each uh, piece of uh, smooth stone that goes down, two will go to here. Now in here we are going to say one and one, like a round robin, and remember to set to zero all the other sides because even if nothing is connected, items will be forced through. Now in here we only want uh, one to go through red. Yes, and the bounce pipe is not really all that necessary. Sorry. <clears throat> now if we start, of course, since the system is not uh, all that... Uh, ...hit, it won't be having the trouble. But you will see how the first smooth stone goes passing through. Uh, then goes down, yes, of course there there's two of them, now gets in, the, in there, perfect. There are two pieces of uh, smooth stone because we have two engines in there, so do not worry about that. There are essentially two blocks getting through the same place. And you can see how things are going. Essentially, we're pumping, we are pumping one item in this recycler, one in this, one in this. And yes, if uh, things are not correct, items will get dropped into the floor. But oh well, I showed you something about a new pipe. Can be useful. And let's store this in here. Okay, and let's say, uh, well, nuclear power requires a nuclear reactor, which we have, and something else. We're going to need some tin, 
yes, to craft the capsules I showed you before, but for this, refined uranium, yay! We are going to use the capsules, like so, and yes, I know we have all these mixed metal ingots, we are going to place them in there, and we are going to see them, hopefully, yeah, going through their rightful place in here. And then it's full. There we are. And each time there's a slot in there, they will go there, then back, etc. Uh, well, essentially what we're going to do with these empty cells is combine them with the refined uranium and craft the uranium cells. Now, please be advised of some little detail. These do not stack. Yep. So don't go all happy and craft them all before having a place to <coughs> locate them. <coughs> now, the nuclear reactor has eight sides. So we are going to need to craft eight of the reactor chambers. There we go, request successful. And since we are going to play with a very, very heavy... Uh, well, high amounts of uh, electricity, we're going to need a really resistant cable. The glass fiber cable will not be enough. So we're going to need to craft another version of our dearly cable. Now which version will it be? Uh, let me see if I can find it without having to resort to the search system. More than likely it will be a... Ah, there we go. We're going to need HB cable, which requires refined iron. However, we're going to want four times insulated refined cable. So we're going to need essentially three pieces of refined iron. Let me ask for it. And we're going to need... Uh, how many do, do we get? 12. Well, we're going to need some more now that I think about it. Like this. And. Oh, I was uh, for a moment thinking we were overflowing with rubber. Again. So I'm going to teach the system how to craft this. Nothing to worry about. So I am going here, way out of the satellite pipe, so I can leave it uh, working, and I'm going to take this, and in here, just by its side, I am going to say, hey, there we go, four times insulated HB cable. Now, this cable can support uh, the highest amount of current all the industrial craft system can output. So it won't burn regardless of the amount of power we are going to use. And since I like to place my nuclear reactors a little far away, we're going to need uh, a huge amount of cabling and we're going to need something else, a new machine I haven't showed you before, which is somewhere, or we could use the MFE card or MFSU card, of course. That depends on how much the, do we want to play around with different stuff. Personally, it depends. If you place the nuclear reactor in a, uh, somewhere where you can use the minecart system to move energy around, then it's okay, but if don't, well, then it's better to just use the cabling. Now, where is it, the machine I am looking for? Mm, this is not the machine you're looking for. <laughs> ah, here we are, HB transformer. The extreme voltage transformer can turn extreme voltage into high voltage. Remember, high voltage is 512 energy units per tick. Now, extreme voltage, oof, that's 2000 or so. And uh, this fella works both ways. It can turn extreme voltage into high voltage and high voltage into extreme voltage. 
I don't think I will be needing to uh, to turn high into stream, but uh, I will need to turn extreme into high. Why? Well, you know, I am going to craft what is called essentially <laughs> a caustic reactor, which is a one-way reactor. Now you've seen there's a there are some nuclear stuff we have, we've been using, the integrated heat dispensers, the integrated reactor plating, and the coolant cells. They are used essentially to craft a nuclear reactor that won't go boom when it produces electricity. What I am going to do is to create a nuclear reactor that, that will only have uranium cells inside. That will mean extreme amount of uh, heat will be produced and when a certain point is reached, the reactor will just go boom, explode, make a big hole in the map. However, I plan to use equivalent exchange to introduce and uh, maybe rest power or logistic pipes, I'm not sure right now, to introduce uh, ice directly inside of the reactor chamber. That way, the chamber will be kept uh, cool enough so it won't explode. But that will have to wait for the next episode. Thanks for watching this one, so I'll see you in the next where we will start building our nuclear reactor. Which I think I might build taking advantage of this little fella here. <laughs> hmm, yes. Anyways, I'll see you around, people. Have fun and goodbye.